The Late Morning Program with Nam Ras Podcast. Hare Krishna, everyone. You are listening to the number one Hare Krishna podcast in the world, the Late Morning Program. I'm your host, Namras Das. I'm here with a recurring guest, Garuda Prabhu. Welcome. Here I am. Thank you. <laughs> good to see you, Namras. Yes, good to see you too. So, Garuda Prabhu, I wanted to bring you on to talk about um, book changes. Uh, this is a very sensitive topic, and I've and I, from my experience, you have been um, a active player in, so to say, in this in this uh, kind of situation or a topic rather. And uh, you did a podcast with uh, the late BG Nishinga Marge, which I appreciated very much. And so I wanted to bring you on my show to talk about a little bit about the same, a different, a different crowd. Uh, but, but let's start out by talking, since all our viewers know you from your previous episode here at the late morning program, I want to start out by just, let's talk about what is the issue with the book changes? Can we just start there? Yeah, I, I do need to <clears throat> let you know that that interview with Narsingamarj was done in my pajamas. <laughs> um, I, you'll notice it. I'm in my bathrobe. I said, to "Oh yeah, Nars I did not. Oh, I did notice that." I said, Narsingamarj, I'm not feeling well today. We're going to have to reschedule. He said, "No, no, no, no. Let's go it down." He just pressed recording, <laughs> and there <laughs> I am. Own. So I'm glad you're not quite as you know, rough on your interviewees. Right, right, right. So I thank you for that. Okay. Yes, but you no can be problem. Rough with me. You can be tough with me. Okay? So, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Good. You know, um, Prabhupada said that when he's gone, he will not be gone because of his vani. Right. His words. And the most important words he left us were his books. And his books are permanent. His books are really a kind of vani murti. You know, we worship the Prabhupada murti as a vapu murti, but this is vani murti, his books. So we would no more uh, want to uh, uh, put Prabhupada in a tuxedo or, uh, you know, um, a casual Western dress because that's not Prabhupada's style of dress. It's Prabhupada looked a certain way, presented himself a certain way, and we love the way Prabhupada looked. I mean, we, those of us who were around when Prabhupada was around, I mean, we adored, you know, seeing Prabhupada, his visage, his presence, his, uh, his demeanor, everything. So that's why we even bother making the Vapu Murti. So the Vani Murti is so important also to preserve because that's how we still have Prabhupada with us. Right. And thus the, the issue of making sure that Prabhupada's Vani Murti is dressed beautifully, is honored beautifully, is offered to puja beautifully, so to speak, metaphorically. So why were the edits made in the first place? Because I know the edits were made such as like alpha, you know, uh, capitalizing things and grammatical edits and things like that. So what's the issue? Like how far does the edit go when, when it's like, how do you know when it's like, okay, this is not preserving the Vani anymore? Okay. So the editing issue really begins with Prabhupada and his editors. I mean, it really begins with Prabhupada. When an author authorizes an editor to review and adjust his or her words in a book, in a manuscript prior to publication, then this is um, totally under the supervision of the author. And whatever he or she signs off on with a publisher, then that's it. That's it. There's no changing from there. 
in Prabhupada's contract with the Bhagavad Gita, he even initializes, he initializes nine different places. I have a copy of that contract. And he initial. this is not something that Prabhupada had someone else do while he was traveling the world. Prabhupada signed this contract, four-page contract, and even changed nine different phrases or uh, statutes in the contract and initialized them. And one of them was, no changes can be made without the authorization of the author. So he was very deliberate. Some the, the picture that people have liked to paint of Prabhupada is that somehow Prabhupada was busy. He was too busy to attend to these sort of things. He was too, you know, preoccupied. First of all, that claim that someone knows whether Prabhupada was too busy or not too busy is absurd. We cannot judge the spiritual master's behavior. He was too busy. Prabhupada was a genius just in terms of material standards. Right. <laughs> Nam Rasaji, thousands of letters of instruction were sent out to devotees. You're lucky if you get an email memo from me, Namrasa. <laughs> Honestly, okay? If you ask me a question about the philosophy in an email, I'll say, Namrasa, you know, go ask someone else or whatever. You know, who knows? I'll probably put you. Probably every question, every inquiry, yeah. every approach coming from every disciple was responded to by Prabhupada. This is this is only one of his miracles. Well, let's talk about the miracle of his books. This is extraordinary, just extraordinary that someone can speak. The, the, I can't speak my books into a dictaphone. I yeah. go over and over and I'm a little slow. Okay. I'm a little slow, but, but Prabhupada was the opposite of slow. It was extraordinary. And, and you know you know where this comes from? Clarity of vision and realization. It right, takes right. me weeks to come to one level of realization. So that's why I'm slow. Prabhupada had it rolling. And that became his Vani. So his Vani is so precious. And... So this is what happened. So when Prabhupada was here physically, he instructed his editors. Main, the main one was Hayagriva. Prabhupada was delighted to find a professor of English. Right. Yeah, he wasn't a doctorate. He, he didn't have a doctorate. He had a master's degree, but he was a, an instructor at, I believe it was Ohio State University. Okay. But my gosh, you know, one of Prabhupada's very first disciples, maybe it was his first, I'm not sure, but, you know, what better arrangement could Krishna make? Now, how important is Prabhupada's books? Well, he dragged a whole trunk of them over acro halfway across the world. I'd say it was pretty important. And Prabhupada you know, took advantage of this wonderful facility Krishna had sent him, the Hayagriva. So, Hayagriva um, uh, edited his, uh, his early books. Um, there were some other people involved as well. And uh, Jaidwaita later on became involved, and Prabhupada appreciated his editing. So, Prabhupada wanted his books to be presentable. He didn't want the philosophy changed. He didn't want the style changed, but he didn't want mistakes. So therein lies the interesting, you know, tension. Right. As I've summarized, 
everything that I've read, I have read extensively, practically everything Prabhupada ever said about his books and editing. I can summarize it for you very easily as four words, no changes, no mistakes. Oh. It's, kind, it's an, almost an impossible, it's like a contradiction. Wait a minute. Wait, you don't want me to change your books, but you don't want any mistakes. <laughs> okay. So Prabhupada's Bhagavad Gita, the flagship work, I think we can all agree is his flagship work, was produced in 1972 by Macmillan Company. And of course, the 68 Gita, the little one, was also produced by Collier Macmillan, and he got reviews from you know famous poets and 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 theologians. I mean, my gosh, this was and just, this is just two, two, three years after he arrived, two years after he started the movement. He's attracting reviews of top literary people, right? Okay, and and a top publisher, amazing. So. It was produced in 72. There were some mistakes found in the Gita that were corrected. Few people know this in 1970, by 1974, where there was a 1974 printing of the Bhagavad Gita. So there were some corrections made in Prabhupada's presence. Okay. Now, this is where I become part of the problem. Okay, so I'm being confessional here, Tom Ross. I know you're not a Catholic priest. You know, I'm. We, we don't have a confessional booth, but the way this this setup that you've got here feels a little bit like a confessional booth, right. honestly. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. 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 So you. That's a little sorry. scarier. That's a little scarier than a than a, than a yeah. A, sorry, a, sorry. Yeah, and and really kind of scared me, but okay, I'll work with it. Okay, I'll work with it. So, so here I am, my first year in graduate school, I was the first devotee to go back into the academic arena to establish Krishna Bhakti theology in the Western world, in the academia wow. right. level. Okay. I was part of the Bhaktivedanta um, Institute with Sarup Damodar. I was part of that crowd. I lived with them for a year, 1977 to 78. Every morning, I would go on a Japa walk with Sro Damodar in the Boston Gardens. Okay, that was my first year at Harvard. Okay, so and Prabhupada knew I was on my way to Harvard. He read my master's thesis on the Chaitanya Charitamrita, and he said some very encouraging words. Anyway, all that aside, there were peers of mine at Harvard who said, "I really like your spiritual master's Bhagavad Gita." But, you know, there are a lot of, you know, typos and spelling mistakes and stuff in it. Do you, are you aware of that? Um, no, not really. Because when I read it, I, I read it to to drink it. You know, I don't, I don't examine every little bubble up in a drink when I'm, you know. I Right. Okay. Get some spiritual inspiration, not to kind of nitpick at what the presentation I, I'm, is. I'm not here to nitpick my spiritual master's books, right. honestly. But I'm very concerned that my spiritual master is perceived, you know, well. And, and I think that's natural for any disciple. Not to artificially uh, make one's spiritual teacher, you know, somehow um, imaginatively wonderful, but, but, but for who he or she is, if, if we have a she, uh, a group. Okay. <laughs> Another topic. <laughs> another, another interesting topic that we can always get to, and I have a lot to say about that. Okay, now, so I went, I actually contacted the BBT and said, you know, there are some mistakes in there. Can you, can you fix them? Well, then I get a call from Jaidweta Swami. Now, mind you, I've been publishing some articles with Back to God in magazine for a couple of years, 1970. 7, 78, 79, a few articles and so on. So I got to know Jaidwaita Swami quite well, Satsuru Maharaj very well, and all these devotees down there, Dravida, 
There were others as well, Tatavit, so on. So, um, Jaidwaita calls me up in 19, I can give you exactly the date. Um, he is not very good with dates, by the way. I've, I've talked with him about the date, but I know because those were different years where I was being tortured. I mean, ta taught at the university. I didn't mean to say torture, but oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, oh, it, was was what? it was a slip. Okay? <laughs> and again, this is a confessional booth. Okay. So, right, right. So, Jaidwaita Swami calls me up and says, um, by the way, I'm editing the Bhagavad Gita. Oh, good. So, you're getting the mistakes out. He said, yeah, but I'm doing more than that. I said, what do, no, what do you mean you're doing more than that? He said, well, if you don't, you know, trust me, come on down to Philly and we'll we'll work on it together. Well, I did because I was a little alarmed. Well, what do you mean you're editing Prabhupada's books more than just the, the, the mistakes, the proofreading mistakes? And he said, yeah, I, I just couldn't imagine what that would be. Okay. So I drive down. It's about a seven-hour drive from from the Boston area, Harvard campus, and I'm I'm going down, and I stay there for about three or four days, and I'm sitting in a room in the BTG house in Philadelphia. There was a BTG house back then. Can I make a Can I make a disclaimer first before yes. you before you go forward? Yeah, sure. This, this the idea of this podcast is not to uh, point fingers at anybody because we, I want to discuss that later with you, Prabhu, about how to navigate this. Yes. But this, uh, like you're mentioning Jadwaita Maharaj and, and, and other devotees and whatnot. But but this isn't, uh, I just want to say this is Garuda Prabhu's perspective of what happened. Yes, uh, in, in absolutely. The, and that's how, it's like a journalistic thing. We're just, you're hearing your perspective. We're not, and I know the comments are going to have all kinds of offensive, inflammatory things being said because I know that's what, how it works on on social media. But I just want to say that uh, you know this is Garuda Prabhu's perspective. Uh, without you know, of course, everyone knows that, but but and it's not in no way to point fingers at anybody. But please continue, Prabhu. Right, but I think it's important to recount the history as best we can. Of course, of course, agreed. And and you know, like I said, I was part of the problem myself i mean i'm right. like i told you i'm being confessional here right okay? right so i came down and i sat there several days with uh jaidwaita swami and ravindra sarup and myself and we went through about half of the gita and apparently uh uh swami had some drafts or things partial drafts of what Prabhupada typed some things were dictated and transcribed, and so on. And basically what I saw uh, the Swami doing, and I told him this at the time, I said, well, I get it. I get it. You're de grievizing Prabhupada's Gita. And he said, yes. Okay. So, and, and I felt like, well, yeah, I mean, you know, of course we want Prabhupada's words. We don't want I agree with his words. We don't want my words. We don't want Nam Russ's words. I mean, we want, you know, Prabhupada's words. Okay. Okay. But here I am, you know, a second year, a third year graduate student at Harvard. I don't know anything about editing. Right. I'm not trained yet as a scholar. I was completely unaware of Prabhupada's instructions regarding editing, completely ignorant. So I went away from there, kind of like, well, okay. And I trust Jaidwaita Swami. After all, he was trusted by Prabhupada at a certain time. So that's where it all began. And I believe that uh, Jaidwaita is very sincere in what he was doing. I really do. Um, he wanted to make sure that Prabhupada's books were pristine and were what Prabhupada originally intended. Well, as things developed, this really proved to be not the right approach according to Prabhupada's instructions. And 
so later, I mean, he completed all of his editing and so on, and he submitted it to the GBC. We're just talking about the Bhagavad Gita. Uh, the Bhagavad right Gita, now, right? Okay. right. He submitted it to the GBC, and um, the GBC authorized it, but frankly, no one really looked at it much. You know, it, it and you know, you can understand this, Namrasaji, because you know, when I was at uh, when I was invited to be the keynote speaker out in LA's uh, Prabhupada Festival in 2017, I gave the example of uh, Rabindranath. Was that his name? I think the head Pajari. Yeah, Rabindranath. Uh, Rabindranath, right? Yeah. So I said, look, you know, there's a point where we each have to trust each other a little bit. I mean, like, I, I don't know whether Rabindranath's chanting the mantras right for the prasadam. I'm not sure I should even eat the prasadam. So <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to have to go behind and and, and check him out. <laughs> I mean, it's natural that we want to trust each other to be doing the very best job we can and 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 you know devotees are by and large sincere they really do want to do the best for Prabhupada and I I go in with that optimistic attitude at the same time I also like rigorous critique and dialogue I think that's extremely important for sure you know um I, I uh, another interviewer, Chaitanya Charan, you know, uh, said, "What would you like to talk about today?" And I said, "Well, there were two articles on Dandavats, both by two leading devotees in the ISKCON world that says, "Don't criticize devotees." They both had the same title, so my title was, "Please criticize me. I want to grow." Right. <laughs> what they really meant to say is, "Don't." hurt devotees, okay? We're not here to hurt one another, but we are here for rigorous critique. Yeah. And I open myself up for rig rigorous critique anytime, from anyone, anywhere, about anything. And believe me, I get quite a bit of it on the internet. So, so especially a uh, disgrace book. I mean, Facebook, I meant. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. No, I'm Russell. I don't know why I I, I I slip a lot with you in these uh, interviews. I, I don't know what it is. I, okay, so <laughs> disgrace book. So the idea here is that then it, it then the the devotees a large number of devotees in the eighties after the publication of the 1983 BBT uh, uh, book, you know. Uh, the, the very widely spread. Very widely spread. Yeah. You know, and to this day, um, you know, has a, uh, a, a, pub a publisher's note in the back um, that says, the result is a work of even greater richness and authenticity. The word for word, and then it explains how, you know, the different things that were improved. And it's called, it's called uh, a second edition, <clears throat> complete edition, revised and enlarged. Now I'm just reporting <laughs> what's what's right here on the on the on the title page. Right. Uh, this is just all. I'm trying to be as factual as possible. Now, yeah. but many devotees were disturbed. Honestly, again, another confession to you, Ram Nam Rasaji. I never paid any attention to it. I'm reading Sanskrit. I'm reading the Bhagavad Gita in Sanskrit. You know, I frankly was sort of in my little bubble, and I I well, honestly I I I didn't know what all the fuss was. I didn't really care. Right. And I'm a friend of Jai Okay. So anyway, so I really was not involved with this for the longest time. But little did I know that it became combative. And we're not here to combat one another. We're here to enter into dialogue, rigorous dialogue, because we all want the same thing. 
So in the BBT Minutes in 1987, I will read you. Jai Dwayta Swami will directly challenge and defeat the attacks from certain quarters of the movement that the new edition of the Bhagavad Gita put out by the BBT is not bona fide. He shall show from the original manuscripts how the editor of the book in the early 1970s distorted and changed Prabhupada's original words. Okay? So this is factually in the BBT minutes. So it became combative. It came to a point where Jai Dwayta had to prove himself in his, in his work. Right. So, again, years went by when I didn't wonder about it at all. In fact, in 2007 or 2009, Swami asked me for a letter of endorsement to be put up on the BBT edit site. I said something about how I love the fact that the Gita has been edited, the mistakes in the Gita have been edited out. I didn't really know of much more than that. I have a question. Yeah. So so when you said you went down to Philly where uh, you know Maharaj was and Rabbi yeah. Nusrat Prabhu was, the editing that was occurring was um, was – grammatical and and all that stuff but but there was did you did you know that there was going to be like bigger changes at yes, that time i did not right but i didn't know how to think about them namra so gee, oh i see okay i honestly didn't i wasn't a trained scholar then right i had never published with the likes of oxford and princeton and yale and work with top editors in the world i had no experience of all this i see okay so, so you said you were saying in 2007 2007 I'm I'm okay I'm I'm a freshly minted doctorate well not that fresh but you know I'm I'm at, I'm tenured at that point but I'm be, I'm beginning to work with, okay I published with Princeton I'm beginning to publish with Harper Collins and and other big publishers and I'm beginning to learn the ropes of actual professional publishing right in a way that the likes of which no other devotee had ever experienced. Okay. So, so I, I willingly gave a letter of endorsement, but I, I, since a few years ago, I took it down, but honestly, I was working from a place of, of just uh, uh, a lack of knowledge. Okay. And, and honestly, so were the BBT editors. But they did the best they could. But it. But then it became combative. That's the part I don't like. It. 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 It should be something that would be open to further inquiry, dialogue, debate, healthy debate, positive debate, and to look into it more carefully. Okay. So I got brought into this thing in 2017 when I was out in LA for the uh, the keynote for Prabhupada's festival. And my topic was appreciating Prabhupada's words deeply, you know? So I went out there and for an hour and a half, I gave my, I did my due diligence. You know, they flew me out there. I, I did what I was supposed to do. And then at the end of an hour and a half, the moderator asked me, well, but what if those aren't Prabhupada's words? Excuse me? What do you mean? Well, what if in the books we're not finding Prabhupada's words, we're finding someone else's words? I, I said, I don't know what you mean, you know, because I knew nothing about this. So there was the start in 2017. And people were saying, well, Prabhupada's words were modified by Hayagriva. And the editors wanted to bring it back to Prabhupada's words as um, evidenced in some drafts, some partial drafts. But others say that Prabhupada authorized it. So that's as good as those being his words. And so, so there, see, there, be, there be, uh, comes the debate. There, there arises the issues. So let me give you a list of things maybe about eight different things that challenges all of us 
in terms of Prabhupada's editing, okay? Yeah. One, the indisputable authority, authority of the author. Fixed text versus indefinitely changing text. Right. Vapu editing categorically different from Vani editing. In other words, Prabhupada's presence, in Prabhupada's presence, without Prabhupada's presence. Oh, yeah. Physically. Okay? Right. Two different sets of assumptions and starting places for editing. I have a lot to say about that. Two different starting places. What does that mean? Um, the, 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 the set of assumptions with, one, with which one works when one starts one's editing. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay? Right. This is key. And what has been so upsetting and so disturbing to devotees without their being able to articulate it and really point exactly to what the problem was, they just felt something's very wrong. And I'm talking not about the extremists that want ISKCON to go down into hell. You know, I'm not talking about that. Right. I'm talking about really, really dedicated, seasoned, devoted devotees here. I mean, for older than myself. Right. Uh, 72 is when I, I came to the ashram. Um, these are devotees from 68. You know, 69. I mean, really, the, the devotees who really launched the movement. I just came and just, you know, had a good ride. You know what I mean? So, yeah. uh, whereas these devotees sacrificed everything, everything. Their health, their income, everything. And these devotees found that they were disturbed by the changes in the books. I had to begin to listen to them. In fact, they begged me to get involved here because of my training and my, you know, my my, my just ability to be able to work with publishing and, and, and books. Okay, so starting places. We'll come back to that. I sure, think you'll yeah, be fascinated yeah. with this. Fascinated. Because what I'm what I wanted to do, Namrasa, what was my motive? You know, Haitukia Pratyata Bhakti, right? So so we're supposed to be without motive. Well, the best way to be without motive is to declare one's motives. Mm. There's the paradox. We are without motives if we share what our motives are. Right, right. I have two motives here. Because honestly, the first thing I need to tell you, and you've already gotten a sense about this with me, is I'm in my little bliss bubble. I've never been happier in my Krishna consciousness in all my life for the last two decades. I mean, I've been, I'm in my little ball of bliss. I have more blessings than I can count in terms of my seva, making headways into the intellectual world. I cannot even count the, the blessings. I'm overloaded with blessings, really. I could use a little a fewer you know, less. I, I, I have too much. Okay, so I don't need a distraction, Nam Rasaji. Yeah, honestly. Yeah. Okay. That said, I noticed the pain devotees are experiencing, and I'm wondering what is that about. And I'm not talking about the extremists. I'm not talking about the the naysayers and the, you know, the conspir conspiracists. You know, uh, that these devotees are you know, come from hell to destroy our movement. I'm not talking about th those. That's a different problem. I have a lot to say about that too. But to stay on, on point here, I wanted to know what is hurting these sincere devotees? What is bothering? I, need, I really needed to know that. Mm -hmm. And the second thing was, I felt that maybe it is my unique opportunity or or my unique position, given my training, to actually be able to go into this whole thing and analyze what is going on. What was done that's good, what was done that perhaps is not good. And offer that to Prabhupada. So those are my motives. Those are good I mean, really, <laughs> there's, not, there's nothing more there. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, the third motive might be, uh, this is a chance to just, you know, associate more with Prabhupada's books. 
I mean, I've been selling Prabhupada's Bhagavad Gita to my students, force feeding Prabhupada's Gita to every single one of my students for 30 years. Wow. So I'm on book distribution, maybe a little weird. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's about 250 books a year. That's really good. Really good. Well, it's not even a book a day. But look, you know, cut me some slack, okay? <laughs> because I make them read the book, and I make them write about the book, and I make them hear me speak about the book. So, you know, not every book distributor has that opportunity to, you know, to indoctrinate <laughs> the, the, the person to whom one sells the book. Right. You know, I'll just do a little, a little digression. You know, Sadaputta and I were sent out on book distribution together once back in 74. So we're going around Washington, D.C., wondering where to stop. You know, we're given a whole box of, of you know, uh, you know, the the the, the original, uh, you know, the Macmillan Gita, you know? Oh, nice. Right? So these big, fat books, right? right? And I said, look, Sadaputta, we're just going to go into the shopping center, okay? You go at one end, you take one box, I'll go to the other end, I'll take another box, and we'll meet in, you know, eight hours. So we both I both I waved to him. I said, time's up, you know. So we bring our boxes back to the car because there's still plenty of books. And I said, Sadaputta, how'd you do? He said, Oh, this is fantastic. I had these talks with two people, one for three hours and another one for four hours. I said, you know what? I had a similar experience. You know, I met this one person and we were so excited, right? Because we knew these people were going to read the books, you know? Yeah. They were going to read the book. Okay, so we go back to the temple, and they said, so how many books did you do? I said, well, between both of us, we did four. <laughs> <laughs> we were so proud because we were sure that these people were going to drink the nectar of the Bhagavad Gita, but we were never put out on book distribution after that. <laughs> They put me out on BTG, you know, just tell people, roll their windows down. Back then, most people didn't have electric. Right? So right. roll the window down, right? And, you, you know, you give them a BTG, ask for a donation on and an intersection. You're dropped off. There's no cell phones. You don't know when you're going to be picked up. You run out of magazines. You're standing there in the middle of a highway. You know, this, these are the old days. Yeah. Okay? These are the old days. Okay, so... I have a relationship with Prabhupada's books now for, you know, 50 years. I, I, I'm invested. Again, motive. Mm. Okay, so, you know, after analyzing... Oh, okay, so we'll get back to that. So the proper or improper application of historical critical method. This is one of my major critiques. It's an improper application of historical critical method. I'll explain what that is later. Editing based on seeing Srila Prabhupada's works as a result of history or as a result of divine grace. History or divine grace. Now that begins to start speaking to the idea of starting points. Do we look at history? Do we edit Prabhupada's books based on history? Or do we edit it on the basis of this is grace? This is a gift. Mm. This is a gift. You give me a gift of a nice korta, and I'll say, well, you know, Namrasa, I mean, uh, thank you, but, you know, I'd like purple buttons, honestly. <laughs> and I would like polka dots, pink. And I, this is so plain. I don't like it. So I'm editing my gift. Right. Got to be careful with that. Better to be gracious, and even behind your back, I still shouldn't say to my wife, look at this ugly court to Ram, Nam, Nam Rasa gave me. No, I should just be grateful, treasure it. This is an act uh, out of love from yeah. Nam Rasa. Hey, got to love that Nam Rasa because he gave me a court to, you know? <laughs> Those points that you're reading from, can you remind me where they're from? Did you write them somewhere, or it was just for... Okay, I'm the reading talk. from something. Uh, I gave a talk to the GBC in Tirupati in October of 2019. 
Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't, I didn't know that. Yeah. And that's what you, that's the main points that you kind of elaborated on? Oh, I, get, I went through, I mean, I went through a lot. So we established what it is, what the issue is, and why it's important. And why does it matter to us? I think it's pretty clear. It's precious. It's very precious, yeah. Very so precious. The court's example was fantastic because that really illustrates it. Like it's not like you accept it from from me in the example. You accept it from me, and it, it's a respect to me that you don't, you know, you know, change it or do all whatever you want with it. That's right. I like that example. And if you're my guru, which which you know, right now you are, okay, so, okay, you're my guru now, okay. So then that makes it even more precious, right? And more like. I don't even understand why he gave me such a boring corta, but you know what? That's something I need to learn to appreciate. Right. Wow. So it's not about shopping, you know, or comparing this corta to the rest of my wardrobe. It's about like, whoa, this comes from Namrasa Guruji. <laughs> okay. So that's even a different level yeah. of gift. Can we go through some of the points that you read from and elaborate on whichever ones you feel that are okay. pertinent to the conversation? I mean, they all are, but. Okay. Okay. Let me get down to some really nitty gritty, heavy yeah. epistemological matters. Okay. Do you like that big word? Epistemological. Okay. Good. Yeah. Okay. Good. Now, <laughs> basically epistemology, epistemology is the endeavor to understand how we know things what is the basis or foundation for knowledge right okay now so what is the epistemology for editing well it doesn't shift from our vaishnava theological epistemology which is that everything first of all is based on shabda pramana Prabhupada speaks about three pramanas in the Ishupanishad introduction. There are as many as six or even as many as nine pramanas if you are educated in Mimamsa hermeneutics, as, I, as am I. But Prabhupada kept it nice and simple for us. He talked about three pramanas, Shabda pramana, Pratyaksha pramana, and Anumana pramana. Okay, to make it simple, Shabda pramana is scripture. Plain and simple. Scripture first. There's no question. <laughs> There's no, that's not, you know, some kind of like, well, not always. No, 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 no. Shabda first. Then pratyaksha, sense perception or, you know, experience. Um, uh, and then anumana pramana is reasoning. It literally means inference, but but it, it can more generically mean reasoning, sort of rational working things out. Okay. If you go to the BBT edit website, not Rasaji, you will notice there. You want me to share it right now? I can do it. Um, you you can if you, yeah. Well, well, you know what? You wouldn't need to because I'll just tell you what's there. There are ten different items along their menu. What is the first thing that they have? History. That is Pratyaksha Pramana. History. Prabhupada's instructions, you would think might, okay, if they're going to go with history, we'll at least do Prabhupada's instructions second. It's not there. Third, it's not there. Fourth, it's not there. Fifth, finally. And it says, Srila Prabhupada says, it doesn't even compile and consolidate the essence of Prabhupada's instructions. There are many things missing there. Mm -hmm. So you can see along that bar, you see that bar there at the yeah, top, here. that horizontal bar? Yeah. History, myths, controversies, articles, and then finally, Prabhupada's instructions. Now, if I were in, and, they, and, and the whole thing is titled, do you see this? Closer to Srila Prabhupada. Right. Okay. Now, if I were writing this website, 
I would shift things around quite a bit. Oops. Yeah. Um, what I would be doing would be putting, first of all, my motto would be honoring Srila Prabhupada, not closer to Srila Prabhupada, honoring Srila Prabhupada. In other words, honoring what he's given us. And the first item on the on the bar would be direct instructions. Not history. Direct instructions. Then, second thing, discussions on editing. Prabhupada's discussions on editing. The third thing would be his own example in the way he treated his own master's work. Fourth thing would be theology and editing. What is theologically, what makes sense theologically and devotionally? How do you treat the words of your spiritual master? Five, then standards of scholarship. And then maybe you look at the history. Maybe. I, I've got history way down on the list. By history on that website, what do they what is they what do they even mean? Like the history, history means editing? Buck to Neil transcribed such and such. Oh, and I see. he was completely, you know, he was on drugs at the time. And he, I'm, <laughs> I'm making up stuff now. Okay. okay, Now I'm lying. Okay. I'm making up fantastic things. But the idea was they were discounting them. You know, okay. Hyagriva, there's a, you know, Hyagriva did have his ups and downs with Prabhupada. No question about it. But when Prabhupada chose to accept his editing, I don't care if Mickey Mouse came along and edited Prabhupada's Gita under Prabhupada's supervision. It's still Prabhupada's responsibility. It's his book. It's his work. Right. Let me put it this way. Jaidwaita Swami wrote a book called Vanity Karma. He came to me for guidance on how to write the book. He said, I've edited, I've written articles, but I've never written a book. Guide me in how to write a book. I was happy to do it. And um, I, I guided him. Of course, you know, he's enormously talented. He you know, doesn't need a, a lot of advice. But but in terms of writing a book, that is a, a tapas. You know, that, that is a tapas. Uh, honestly, I don't know why anyone writes books. It's just too much effort. It's just too much uh, brain strain. So yeah. anyway, but he so he went along after a few years, and he would send me drafts. I still have those drafts. Now, Krishna forbid, if he should pass away tomorrow, and in several years, I decide, after looking over the drafts, you know what, there's some stuff in here that's better. There's stuff in here that's that he didn't include. I'm going to put out a second edition of Vanity Karma. He would be rolling in his grave. I would be wrong. Even if you did that to me, and even if it was better, I'd still be rolling in my grave because you have no right to change an author's work without their authorization. They call that post posthumously editing, right? That's right. Posthumous editing. That's right. That's right. After the deceased author can no longer supervise, then things change it, it, along your same example there just a little diversion but w what would what would academically what would be the right thing to do if you wanted to put out a second edition okay first of all there would be absolutely no need for a second edition i have gone through the bhagavad gita 3 times over the past four years, thoroughly tracking every single change that the editors made at the BBT. Like every change? Every single change. Grammatical, alphabetized, you know, uh, every capitalizing. Why do you think my behavior is so aberrant? And, and <laughs> I mean, this, this is enough to drive anyone crazy, okay? So, I have an excuse, and that's my excuse. Three times, okay? I've just gotten through the third time. Now, the third time was, what would the Bhagavad Gita look like 
if following Prabhupada's instructions to the T. So, what and, and now where where the essence of Prabhupada's instructions are this. In a letter to Rupanuga in 1970, our editing is to correct grammatical and spelling errors only without interpolation of style or philosophy. It's just that simple. Now, let me boil it down even further. First of all, I have to say that Prabhupada, you know, Prabhupada, in my reading of everything I've read, Prabhupada was really not ever that much an anxiety about anything else as much as he was his books. Right. He was concerned that his books would be changed. Really? Yeah. He said the change disease. You Americans, you want to change everything. And you know what? We do. Okay, here's another confession, okay? So I'm going through Prabhupada's Gita, and I'm seeing things that Prabhupada did not include in the translation of verses. And I'm thinking, oh, well, we should put that in there. Ah, don't you do that, Garuda. Don't you do I am not here to improve Prabhupada. I am not here to correct Prabhupada. I am not here to co-author with Prabhupada. I am not here to change or modify what Prabhupada, like, like the Korta. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not here to do that. And even I found myself wanting to do that. Wow. So Mahabaho, oh mighty armed one, was not there in a verse. It was there in the Sanskrit. Prabhupada did not include it in the verse. Oh, let's put it in there. You know, oh, Garuda, mm. restrain yourself. It's not in there. You have no right to put it in there. I remember on the other interview that you did, you were mentioning how one of the editors, because the purport was going in a specific direction, they wanted to edit the purport so because the edit the, the purport suddenly in the original text went like in a completely other direction like like this so to continue that same trajectory that it was going from the beginning they changed something so it continued to go in that direction and and you were very surprised by that and i was very surprised hearing that saying like yeah. Wait, hold on a second. You can't do that. I mean, you just have to. If he if he wants to go in another direction of what the purport was originally going, then then he has by all the means to do that. I mean, it comes down to this, Nam Rasaji. Write your own Gita. You know, if you've got something to say, then write your own Gita. Now, as it turns out, I did. Okay, so whatever. But <laughs> but but you know, but my motive for doing that Gita was to prove that while Prabhupada can appear to be very sectarian to outsiders, because Prabhupada's Gita is very much a devotee Gita. Yes. Very much a devotee Gita. And you just look at the Amazon reviews, they're either five stars or one star, okay? One star written by outsiders that don't, that just don't want to surrender to Krishna. And the out five stars, people are totally surrendered to Krishna. And so, you know, okay. So I'm trying to deal with the two through four stars. <laughs> Okay, you know, okay, right. It's a great uh, way to put it. <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to cover the other stars. So, so, so uh, you know, I have now my my gate is only sold about fifty thousand. Okay, um, but it's it's sold, you know, from Harper Collins, is a worldwide publisher. But you know what I what I wanted to do is, you know, people would criticize. Well, Prabhupada, you know, has uh, uh, in the word for word it says yoga. And Prabhupada puts that in the translation as devotional service. Right. And they get, oh, it's not devotional service. It's yoga. So what I wanted to do is show, you know what, guys? If you add it all up, 
it all says the same thing, even if you do an academically accurate, obsessive, compulsive translation like I did. The difference is that Prabhupada was fast tracking us to the conclusion. Yeah. Because the fact is, the ultimate yoga is devotional service. Yoginam, api, et cetera. Yeah. I mean, 647. So the point is, Prabhupada lived and breathed the Gita. I'm just a mundane scholar of the Gita. And even when I do my accurate, mundane, Sanskritist, you know, tight translation, it comes to the same place. I'm trying to show people that what Prabhupada did is exactly where the Gita ends up anyway, and he goes further. My Gita never changed people's lives. Prabhupada changed people's lives. Right. So, so the point is, it's it, and you know Tom Hopkins before he passed away recently, and we were good friends, and he was a, such a good friend to the movement, maybe the best friend uh, scholar in the outside world to the movement, or at least one of them. Okay, so Tom and I, he, Tom gave me his whole library, and that's as you know how I got the three Delhi Bhagavatams as a shock of a gift. I did not know he had them. Right. So, you know, I mean, when I went into his room, I mean, I started salivating. I mean, I just like, I, it's like a, like a, like a cougar after, you know, some kind of prey, you know, I just <laughs> I was so excited. I've been looking for them for three decades. And so, but, but Tom Hopkins called me up one day and said, Graham, what is the fuss? Why is the BBT doing all this modifying and arranging of the Bhagavad Gita. Why is there a second edition? You see, and he then he said, you know, you know, Graham, right? I mean, you're a scholar. I mean, you know that we scholars are not going to Prabhupada for an absolutely pristine academic treatment. We're not going there for that. What we're going for is the authentic, living, bhakti, breathing author. That's what we're going there for. When did he ask you that? Probably in he the seventies. He said that about a year before he passed away, just two years ago. Oh, just two years ago, because he kind of follows me on on a disgrace book, a, a Facebook. <laughs> Sorry, I don't, I can't get the name right. Uh, on Facebook, yeah. and he sees that I get involved, so he's been following that a little. Oh, bit. I see, I see. Okay, you see? yeah. Now Tom Hopkins is someone who's even entrusted me with the revision of his of his well known book on Hinduism. I'm supposed to get it, you know. Um, uh, published, and now I've got to do it well posthumously. Now I'm, I'm not going to go in there and edit the thing. Um, you know, I'm going to respect to what he wrote. And if a publisher publisher asks me to edit it, you know, I'm probably going to refuse. Or there is a way to be completely faithful to an author while also editing. Really? Yeah. Now that's my mystic potency. <laughs> yes. And I will tell you how I do that. And um, before our interview is up, but there is a way to do it. And that's what the BBT missed. A way to be completely honoring Prabhupada's gift. While at the same time, honoring his wish for no mistakes or errors. How do you do that? That's my little secret. Okay. Well, you have to tell us. Well, what's it worth to you? I mean, you give me a new quarter. Uh, yeah. I'll give you five. <laughs> give me five. Okay, good. I'll hold you to that. Okay, now. Um, okay, so here's the point. That Shabda Pramana, the guru's words are in some sense the extension of Shabda Pramana. How many times has Prabhupada written in his books? that the instructions of the spiritual master is the life and soul of the of the devotee, of the disciple. How many times? Nam Rasa Ji, it, it's got to be, you know, many dozens, at least. Many yeah. dozens. Okay. The life and soul, the instructions. So obviously we need to begin not with history. Not with history. We, you know, not with evidence of somehow there's some 
uh, uh, dispar- uh, some uh, discrepancy between what got published and the and a, and a draft, an earlier draft. For all we know, Prabhupada liked what was published better than what was in the draft. The point is, we cannot second guess the spiritual master's mind. We cannot say he was too busy or he didn't know. Here are the dreadful, I'm going to read you something that's a little painful, but the conclusions that you'd have to come to when you start the editing with the premise that Prabhupada's books um, need to be edited beyond what he knew was published in 72, what he spoke from, over 250 lectures. 250 lectures. Over five years. And he only mentioned like a handful of times when he came across a mistake and was like, this needs to be changed. Yes. And those things were changed in the 74. Where is the need for a second edition enlarged? That's scary. What's what does it be enlarged to? <laughs> right. And I even said to a leading BBT, they call them trustees, but they're really directors because it's in a, a corporation now, it's not a trust, but whatever. I don't deal with all that stuff, it's beyond my pay grade. But one of the very powerful leading BBT men, because they're, I believe, all men, said to, I said to him and Tirupati, I said, we were sitting down, we we're having a great talk. And I said, look, as much as you and I disagree, and you know, we're having a friendly talk, I said, at least we can agree that the Max 72 was authorized by Prabhupada. And he said, no. What do you mean, no? I said, I don't believe, he said, I don't believe Prabhupada's Macmillan Gita was authorized by Prabhupada. I, I, I said, you mean, we can't even agree on that? Wow. I said, what do you mean? He said, if Prabhupada knew how many mistakes were in the 72 uh, uh, Macmillan edition, I don't believe he would have ever authorized it. I said, Prabhuji, you believe, that's your belief. The fact is, he authorized it. And you know what? Even if he knew how many mistakes were in it, he has spoken about, he, these are Prabhupada's words, not according to the grammatical rules and other rhetorical rules, but, the, but I mean to say thoughts and the effects of such revolutionary literature is required, not the grammatical. The so-called rascals, they are concerned with the grammatical. But those who are actually worker, they are concerned with the thoughts. When you when you mean author, he authorized. What does that mean? Like I know he spoke for it two hundred fifty times. He accepted it. He approved it. He embraced it. He was proud of it. I see. In, in other words, there's no, no no more you know changing anything. Yeah. Another okay. question that arrived. Yeah. Before you before you go into that, yeah, sure. as you you being the Harvard educated, you know, Princeton published, doctorate nerd. devotee, toss it off to nerd, <laughs> devotee uh, amongst the Prabhupada's disciples who know about publishing. How come you're not on the BBT as a trustee or director or whatever? Because you're you know you deal you deal with this kind of thing. How come you're not there? Um. Okay, well, no, Marissa, I, I mean, I, I, you and I, I, I thought you and I were friends, honestly. I mean, I no, just, no, we are. No, I know, I know, I know, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Okay, I'm, I'm playing with you here. Okay, okay, good. Um, one thing I've, I'm sort of a hybrid ISKCON person in the sense that I cannot, because I'm a scholar also on ISKCON, I cannot have any formal institutional positions. Oh, I see. Okay. This is why the few, the handful of disciples I have 
which I tried to get rid of. Really, I tried to get rid of them. They're they're giant leeches. They won't let go. So I. <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I made it difficult. I, I, I made horrible faces at them and everything, but they won't leave. So these handful of disciples, so they're, again, I cannot go through their diksha system. Oh, I see. I guru see. system. Right, right, right. For the same reason. You okay. see? Now, now, I am in the BBT minutes back in the 80s for being, along with Sri Dayananda Maharaj, we were supposed to develop criteria for new publications. It's still on the books. We were never kicked off. So I don't know. We're, we're still kind of on there. But again, no official positions. Right. Okay. So this for the same reason, I can't be officially a BBT, you know, director or a BBT, uh, you know, they can consult with me or insult with me, mm. as the case may be, uh, about editing if they want to. And in fact, they did. They came from around the world, uh, several um, devotees in the BBT. Actually, it's it's all right to name them because they were. it was in ISKCON News. So um, uh, 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 Brahma Mohartaji from uh, Sweden. Sweden. Um, yeah, Nareshwar from Mayapur, Australia, mm -hmm. uh, Dravida from California. Um, and there were other devotees there. And they met with me in Washington, D.C., which is fairly close to me, um, because they knew I was going to be holding a an academic meeting in, at my other university, Graduate Theological Union, where I'm faculty. And I, held, I, I raised to hold a meeting on posthumous editing of a great master's work. Special attention given to Srila Prabhupada. And this will be published in a year. So you already had the meeting? Yes. Wow. And what's going to be published exactly? Like a paper on that meeting? Uh, 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 all 14 presentations. Wow. Interesting. Nam Rasaji, this has been such an important topic for devotees because the Vani is so precious, so valuable. There was even a god brother of mine, Shravanananda, who was fighting cancer. And in the last two years of his life, he helped raise that money. He would call me every other morning to ask me what's happening with your research because I was beginning to examine the changes. He said, Garuda, I cannot tell you how much this means to me. Wow. This is a devotee who had been involved since I think 1970 in Prabhupada's movement. He was dying of cancer. He, had, he has a wonderful wife, two sons, two beautiful sons, their families. So he was calling me every morning and he was, and then he realized that we have to have this meeting in Graduate Theological Union. I had scholars come from England and America, and the papers are magnificent. And they basically add up to everything that I'm talking about in my approach. Shabda Pramana, first. Pratyaksha may be on top of it, based on top of that, but only mildly. It has to be Shabda, the instructions. And by way of extension, this also corresponds to Prabhupada's instructions on Arsha Prayoga, the privilege of the sages, Prabhupada translates that as. You don't change what the sages give you, even if they're mistakes. I know that sounds counterintuitive, you know, why wouldn't you want to change a mistake? You know, when Prabhupada's um, Brahma Samhita was given to the BBT to publish back in the 80s, I was involved in that. The BBT was consulting with me. Prabhupada said before he left, he said, do not change one letter. It was Bhakti Siddhanta's purple, right? Bhakti Siddhanta, right, yeah. Yeah. There were some spelling, there were this or this. Some, he said, do not change one letter, one thing, none. Print it exactly as it is. 
because that preserves the soul of the author's spirit through its in its words. See, we're talking about something that's at a at a higher level here, not a mere academic level where we're talking about history or mistakes made by his editors. Mm. It's it's that's not really what this is about. This is about not interpolating style, Prabhupada said, or philosophy. But really, it's about voice. It's about the I'll, shakti he put in those words. Right. I want to hear more about this, the outcome and kind of like the meeting, because that's like a really new development, it seems. Yeah. Like, what was the, what was the, like, we, you had people from ISKCON and the BBT and scholars all come together and talk and give a presentation, but what, like, what's the conclusion and like, what's the next step? Because it seems like it's like a very positive, you know, moving forward. Yes. I invited the BBT to have one representative come and listen. They didn't come. There was, no, there was there no, no one from the BBT? Nope. I invited them. I invited the GBC to come, one representative from the GBC. And actually, he wanted to come. He was going to come, but it ended up being in, in conflict uh, with his GBC schedule. I see. So there was no GBC member, GBC representative there, nor BBT representative. No, and it was a shame. It was a closed conference, so it wasn't open to the public. Right, right. I, I remember you were raising money. You were raising money to make that happen, and yes, you know so that we could fly people around, have it catered, right, and very good um, uh, uh, living space for them at the at the university campus. It was a wonderful conference. And of the 14 scholars, eight were Vaishnavas, initiated Vaishnavas. And of the eight, five were Prabhupada Shishyas. Wow. So there you go. This is not like total mundane scholarship. And the, the keynote speaker is a very good friend of mine. Because my wife and I spent time with him and his wife in his house in Cambridge was the doctoral advisor to Tamal Krishna Goswami. Oh, wow. And he and I became very close friends. So he wrote the keynote speech for the, for the volume. It's magnificent. It comes down to Arshapra Yoga in healthy tension with Yukta Vairagya. You leave it alone. You don't start putting on dots, polka dots. Yeah. Appreciate it as it is. But you can, on the side, make some suggestions to the reader that this may have been also what the author intended, but we don't know. But we give, we, we don't, we don't uh, remove, but we might move. You see, whoever invented end notes, mm. I owe that person my life. Because you keep what's there, but with a little superscript, you go to the end and suggest that perhaps this was not what the author intended. Here's what we think it might be. So you don't, you see, it's still respectful of the original, yeah. right. but you allow the reader the benefit of seeing something that's an alternative. I might even, refer, for example, there are a few cases, there are many cases where I actually go back to the 68 edition where the same passage is there, but somehow it got changed. So if it's better in the 68, I'll either switch it out, put it in the, in the purport, but then put the original in the end note or vice versa. If it's really not that bad, I'll keep it in the body but suggest an alternative reading in the end note. And this is a very gentle process without a second edition. Seems like a very reasonable way to do it. I know I don't look like a reasonable person, <laughs> but I can be, you know, promoting reasonable approaches for editing. That's for sure. Right. Yeah. 
So is there, there is a way to do this. And, and the fact that this were ever done, I, it could garner a whole new set of endorsements and appreciations from the academic community because suddenly they would see, wow, they know how to honor their master's work instead of all these changes. See, that's transparency. Yeah. Total transparency. With the second edition that we have now, you know, it's so hard to know. They claim that they're changing things closer to Prabhupada in earlier drafts. They call it the manuscript. There is no the manuscript, by the way. So that's that's even misleading. There are pieces of drafts. And, and you know what? They don't always follow the draft. They pick and choose ad hoc. There's no rhyme or reason. There's no method, Namrasji. This is upsetting. Yeah. It's at the whim of the editor. It should not be. When you say, when you're saying if we go and do that, so are you saying that there's no scope? Is there a scope to do it the way you're saying, or the way I? I mean, not. It's not even what you're saying. This is the academic. This is the correct way of doing it. Yes. It's not. But you know, the, the irony is that what Prabhupada instructed was not only the academic way, but it's also the the, the highest devotional treatment as well. That's the funny thing about it. They actually merge. Mm -hmm. Whereas the BBT keeps saying they need, need to, do you know that the second edition, people think that the second edition is fixed. Do you know that there are at least seven different corrected versions of the second edition? I did did you know, know that? that? No. It's astonishing. Well, one of the BBT leading devotees proudly said oh no no we've got at least seven different editions of the second edition i said what he said well we keep correcting things all the time <laughs> Krishna, Krishna. <laughs> this is Prabhupada's vani nam rasa g right you you can't change a gift a gift is something you receive, you accept, and you treasure. In the case of Prabhupada's Vani, you honor it by saying, you know, by, by the Yukta Vairagya. So Yukta Vairagya here means what would be expected of normal publishing conventions. Mm -hmm. So obviously, if you spell T-E-H and you mean T-H-E, we're not going to keep T-E-H. We're going to correct that. Okay, come on. There's no reason, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to put, oh, you know, um, uh, you know, uh, mighty armed one, Mahabahu. I'm not going to put that in the verse. Prabhupada dropped it. Prabhupada dropped it. I'm not going to sit here and judge Prabhupada. I'm not going to sit here and try to understand what it was that that uh, caused him to to have it in there, not have it in there. That's not my business. This begs the question, does the effect of the book, the effect of the Vani change or diminish because the books are changed? Like, are people not going to join because of it? Or is this like transcendental literature not going to affect their heart the same way the, the Max 72 did? Okay. Some people say it doesn't have any potency anymore because it's been tampered with. In the scholarly world, we say it's a corrupt edition because it's not what the author, you know, wanted. We have no indication that Prabhupada wanted a second edition at all. He never spoke about a second edition. He never ordered the BBT to come out with a second edition. And he never ordered people to go back to his drafts any more than I would want people to go back to drafts of my book. Heck, you know, my book with Princeton, you know, I've got some stuff in there that's pretty darn good. It didn't make it in the final book. It's pretty darn good stuff, at least according to me, but whatever. Okay. Hmm. But it didn't make it in the book. And you know what? It wasn't supposed to. Leave the book alone. Maybe that stuff can be used elsewhere or whatever, like the Bhagavatam Prabhupada did and so on. You see, 
these are these are the kinds of assumptions that the BBT are making tacitly with their approach to editing. That's this is a little painful, but I'm going to have to share this with you. Sure. Prabhupada didn't know how bad his editors were. Prabhupada was unaware of the mistakes in his books. Prabhupada trusted his editors when he should not have. Prabhupada was just too busy to care about his books. Prabhupada didn't have time to be concerned with his books. Prabhupada was unable to empower his early editors. Prabhupada's English was poor and needs rewriting. Prabhupada would want us to go to earlier drafts to correct his books and make them better books. Prabhupada's works are essentially unfinished until a BBT editor comes along and completes them. Those are the tacit assumptions that are definitely made by their approach. Right. The, here are the assumptions that should be made. Prabhupada's divine mind cannot be known and must be respected. Frankly, I need to respect your mind, Namrasa. I need to ask you what you're thinking and feeling. I cannot say what you are when I get off this interview. Yeah. You know, my wife will say, how did the interview go? I said, well, Nam Russell thought it was crap. You know, he just thought it was crap. <laughs> well, did he say that? Well, I don't know, but I mean, I think that's what he was thinking. No, I'd have to ask him, right? right? Yeah. So even with regular or, you know, in ordinary parlance, we need to check and find out what it is that we do think and feel about things. Okay, so... Um, we know that Prabhupada authorized Macmillan Bhagavad Gita. Prabhupada never ordered or authorized a second edition revised and expanded. We will never know if Prabhupada would have ever authorized a second edition of his work, making it supposedly closer to him. Prabhupada expressed a fear that devotees would change his books over and over. Prabhupada was explicit about how his work should be edited. Prabhupada's works are not just his own, but they are Krishna's words coming through the parampara. He said that. He stated that several times. And finally, as custodians of Prabhupada's works, we must not misapply historical textual critical methods to his work, going back into the earlier drafts as if these were the Dead Sea Scrolls and we're trying to reconstruct what Prabhupada really wanted. No, this is not the Dead Sea Scrolls, non Rasaji. Prabhupada was around when they were published, Ed Macmillan. We don't have to try to reconstruct some mysterious text that, you know, that never got known and really, you know, has never been discovered until the editors of the BBT, you know, put those fragments together from the caves. <laughs> It's not like that. Right. It's a misapplication of historical critical method. On the BBT edits, uh, bbtedit.com website, there's a section called myths. I wanted to discuss that a little bit with you. Sure. The first one goes, the myth that Srila Prabhupada ordered, not a word of my book should be changed. That's a he that's a that's a very heavy statement. Did did he or did he not say that? He was concerned about his books being changed. He, he he lectured devotees about the change disease. Right. Effectively, Prabhupada said, no changes, but no mistakes. Okay. I had a, a debate with uh, Dravida um, uh, in front of 30 Sabha members for three weeks. It was over email. And we would go whether the BBT had the right approach or whether we really need to review it and, and try to do better, okay, which is my approach. And in the end, they voted 24 to 5 in favor of me. The, these world – this is a BBT subcommittee of some kind, okay. So very fine Vaishnavas on this, on these, uh, on this committee. Now, what – one of the things I confronted Dravida about is something that Rameshwar – confronted Dravida about, and this is something that happened in L.A. in front of me, which freaked me out, honestly. 
Rameshwar said, for you know, Garuda's sake, you change something in the Chaitanya Chartamrita purport, where Prabhupada said something to the effect like, when the jiva is in the Tatasta Shakti, you changed it to the jiva is the Tatasta Shakti. He said to, to Dravida, why did you change it? He said, because it doesn't make sense. But was there any, he's Rameshwar said, was there anything grammatically wrong with the, with the sentence? He said, no. Was there anything, uh, were there any mistakes, anything uh, punctuated? He said, no. So you changed it because you thought it didn't make any sense. He said, yes. Prabhupada says in four other places that the jiva is the Tatasta Shakti. So I was changing it back to be consistent with what Prabhupada said in other places. I said, oh my God, Dravida, you're going to change things according to, to be consistent with what Prabhupada says elsewhere in his books? Prabhupada is, is most of the time inconsistent. Right. He, be, why? Because he's looking at things from different angles. Don't take away the richness of Prabhupada's books. And, and just because you think that it doesn't make sense, does this mean I have to read Prabhupada's books through the filter of your mind? I mean, you're very intelligent, Trivita, but you know what? I'm a I'm little bit, not a whole lot, but I don't want your intelligence to filter my view of Prabhupada's books. He said, well, Garuda, it doesn't make sense. I said, first of all, I can tell you right off the bat how it does make sense. He said, really? He challenged me. How does it make sense? I said, very simply. When Prabhupada is stating that the jiva is the Tatasta Shakti, he is making an ontological assertion philosophically. When Prabhupada is saying that the, when the jiva is in the Tatasta Shakti, he's making an existential assertion philosophically. Makes perfect sense to me. His mouth dropped. We kind of locked, our eyes locked. It seemed like, you know, in eternity it passed by. And he said, well, I never thought of that. I said, Dravida, am I to read Prabhupada's books according to what you think of and what you don't think of? Right. This is not, this is not fair. I even mentioned this, <clears throat> this event to Hridayan Andamaraj. Because he called me up because it came up in a GBC meeting, a North American GBC. What the heck is Garuda up to? He's going off with these extremists, you know, with the book. And, and of course, a new to men. And he does not know me. I'm not an extremist. I'm, I'm not an ISKCON hater. I'm an ISKCON lover. I'm an ISKCON hopeful. I am an independent voice and a scholar. That's fine. So they said, so Reed and I said, no, 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 no. Garuda, look, I'll, I'll find out what Garuda's doing. You know, and Reed and Andamarish called me up and said, Garuda, look, I've known about these book, or, you know, this debate about the books. And I said, you know, it's a little change, a little there. It's not going to make a big difference. I said, well, let me tell you, let me tell you what happened with Trevetta. Okay. I think it does make a difference. And this, this completely stopped me in my tracks. And I told them what happened. And, you know, after I mentioned this, you told this anecdote to Reed and Andermarsh. There was a pregnant silence on the other end of the phone. Now, if you don't, if you don't know Reed and Ander very well, I do. And for him to be silent is an extremely unusual occurrence. Okay. Now, you know, I mean, he was a little shocked, honestly. And it 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 changed his mind. He said, you know what? You're right. Prabhupada's book should be left alone. We can annotate a little bit, you know, and, and he had the basic idea. But isn't it that, for example, the Chaitanya Charitamrita, it was dictated and then someone was listening to it and typing it out? Correct. What if they just typed it wrong? Uh, if it was typed wrong, okay, and that, and that that's, the, that's the whole basis of, of the editing, okay, that Prabhupada had editors that were incompetent. Like, for example, um, in the Gita, the phrase Sea Journey was written, it was published. And really, Prabhupada said, Sea Churning, Churning, oh, the journey. The journey of the sea, <laughs> not a sea journey. <laughs> right, right, okay. right. Oh, look, okay. Sea Churning, okay. yeah. Okay, so you know what? 
that's a case in which I would put C churning in the body of the text, but I don't remove anything. I move some things. So I move it to an annotation in an endnote saying originally this was there. We have good reason to believe that what Prabhupada was saying was C churning. Oh, you're saying keep C journey, but then annotate it and say, is that what you're saying? Well, well, in this case, I would probably put C churning in the actual text. Oh, okay, okay. And change it out, right? And but I would not erase C journey. I would put that in the endnote with a superscript going to an endnote, saying mm -hmm. this was originally there. I we see. Believe that this was perhaps. Um, a, mis a mistake, but you know we can't know for sure. But it very reasonably. So that's where we're pretty sure that was a mistake. Mm. Now, where it's it's iffy, we leave it in the body of the text, and then we annotate and say, it's possible that Prabhupada meant this, right? And we offer the reader that, but we never, never keep things hidden. Everything is transparent. There is an Arsha Prayoga principle at the top right absolutely no changes i don't change anything i may suggest a few things i don't remove anything the the bbt edit page basically says that that's a myth that he ordered that not a book not a word of my book should be changed it's simplistic um a a you know he has stated that krishna has spoken these books through me I mean, Namrasa, if I tell you that, you know, Krishna has spoken every word that I've said to you in this interview through me, then you damn well will not change it because that's not even my words. Those are Krishna's words. Now, okay. obviously, Krishna's not speaking through me <laughs> very well um, at this point. Uh, not no, no fault of his own. It's my, it's, it's my lack of transparency. But the idea is that to see this is where this is what hurts devotees. This is what's been so painful to devotees, that all of those presuppositions I just read to you, Prabhupada was unaware. Prabhupada didn't know how to empower his editors. Prabhupada didn't. Prabhupada accepted his books the way they ended up, and that was good enough. They're not. You, you heard the point about grammar. Those people who are worried about correcting grammar and so on, that is not the, the idea. It's it's to preserve the spirit of the book. And that's what Tom Hopkins was talking to me about. It's a very different kind of treatment here. And even the academics, all 14 of us in, uh, in Berkeley at the Graduate Theological Union came to that conclusion. How do these disciples change Prabhupada's words? It, it was inconceivable to them, knowing the tradition some of them are outsiders and they couldn't, they were shaking their heads. We don't understand that. Hmm. Has to be done carefully and delicately. It doesn't matter if there's evidence as, as, as um, they call it evidence. They call it missing evidence, which is a misnomer. If it's missing evidence, then, then they don't have evidence, but they call it missing evidence. Anyway, okay. a little strange. It's sloppily done. It's not professionally done. It is without precision. Now, that said, uh, Namrasaji, they also made a lot of really good contributions. Okay? Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I'm sitting here criticizing what they've done. I'm criticizing the, the premises on the uh, which form the basis of their editing. But in the process of doing that, they have done a lot of important editing. Like, for example, Prabhupada, when he would quote other Shastras, it would just rattle off because Prabhupada you know, lived and breathed, you know, countless number of Shastras, right? Right. So for him, it was natural. He would just spout it, and then he wouldn't say where it was from. Right. Well, for me, that's frustrating because I want to know where it's from, right? Yeah. And for a lot of people. So you know what they did? Before they had internet, before they had that kind of search capability, they combed the scriptures and found these quotes where they are located. That's huge. Uh-huh. Wow. 
Wow. Yeah. In fact, I don't even think I'd be willing to spend my time doing that, even with the internet, right? Okay, so, you know, I mean, okay? So that was huge, okay? Fantastic. Now, because Prabhupada did not put it in the body of the text, I will put a superscript, and I will put it in an endnote. This is from blah, 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 blah. Right. There you go. There is an appendix in the original edition that lists all of the Shastras from which these from which Prabhupada extracted quotes. And he just gives the page numbers into the text of the Gita. But it doesn't say where in those texts that particular passage comes from. Mm -hmm. You see? So this is a little more precise, but again, we're not putting it in the text because Prabhupada didn't put it there. That's why we're putting it in the end note. I it's want to respectful, you see? Yeah. Um, from the question I had previously, this one myth um, actually comes, it's just kind of a similar point. The myth that after an Acharya departs, his works are never to be edited. Also, in piggybacking on that, in our parampara, or th- our history of Acharyas, has there been ever a time where things were edited after they left this world? Well, there there is... Uh, there was an arrangement, uh, apparently, with Jiva Goswami that he could edit the uh, a certain works of of Rupa Goswami, and and, uh, and then there was this whole discussion about Sanatan Goswami um, uh, working with Gopabhatta Goswami, for example, with the Hari Bhakti Vilas, and, and and different. There are some different arrangements that the Goswamis made. They were a team, and they, we're talking about co-authors. I mean, I hate to say it, but I ain't no Jiva Goswami. <laughs> okay as much as i hate to admit that okay my ego really it's painful but it you know <laughs> the point is that no one is capable of co-authoring with Prabhupada. that's the idea mm-hmm. so when you say is there a history of editing well yes among the goswamis there was some of that but we're talking about the short goswamins we're not <laughs> we're not talking about you know a little measly garuda das or Jai Dwaita Swami, or any of us. We treasure Prabhupada's works. And just as we don't change the Constitution of the United States, you're an American, right? I mean, you're a card carrying yeah. American. Yes, I am. Yeah, did you pay your taxes, by the way? I did. Yeah, good. I, I did. Re- my federal return back, though. Yeah, yeah. I know I haven't gotten my return back either, so I'm very frustrated. But <laughs> see, I see it as a country club. You know, y- 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 there's a membership fee. Every year, right? It's on a sliding scale, and it's <laughs> figure it out, and it's, it's your country club fee. So, okay, we're card carrying Americans. I love America so much. Okay, and, and I do too. You know, as yeah. much as it's weird, you it's know, weird, yeah, for sure. Tons of problems. Okay, <laughs> it does have a constitution. It does. I don't see anyone going in there editing the constitution. I think Jefferson did a pretty damn good job. Now, but there is something called an amendment. An amendment means either something is modified or something is further explained and embellished. That's called the Bashya tradition. Where is our Bashya tradition? It's nowhere. There's not one real Bashya to Prabhupada's books. We've written memoirs. We've written theme books. We've written popular books. We've written compilations and transcriptions of Prabhupada's words. We've written all kinds of stuff. Translations. We've got one devotee who's translating oodles, oodles and oodles and oodles of past literature. Where is the Bashya? We are a Bashya tradition. This is where we can explain things. The incendiary passages that can seem racist or misogynist or, you know, or, or wild, fantastic scientific theories or whatever. These, you don't change Prabhupada's books. You explain Prabhupada's books. Right. Some people would even have a problem with that. Oh, problem in which way? In, in like, don't, don't even add footnotes. 
Like, who are you to explain what Prabhupada meant? So it can be done by a collective effort. Yeah. You see, the editing has been done by a single person in the BBT. You know that the Oxford NRSV Bible has 56 PhD editors? 56. Wow. And Prabhupada's wow. books has one? I think there's something wrong with that. Now, when Prabhupada was around physically, he didn't have just one. He had Satsrup, he had Jaidweta, he had Hygriva, he had, he had a group, and they were all working under him for his own books. Putting together Basha would also take a committee. Expertise, training and expertise, but without any talent, is it produces mediocrity. Talent without training equals erratic performance. Erratic. Sometimes it's good, sometimes not good. It's it's not reliable. Training plus talent is very good. Okay. But collective training, collective talent is transcendental. Mm. Talent without training is Thomas Aguna. Training without talent is Raja Saguna. Training and talent is Sattva Kaguna. Collective training, collective talent. They should have sattva. Mm. And that's what you're trying to do with that um, that meeting you had a year ago or whatever it was. I'm a team player. I don't believe even if the BBT came to me and said, uh, Garuda, you're you know, you have complete absolute authority, which they've done with Jai Dweta, by the way, in the past. You have complete absolute authority to make any changes to Prabhupada's books that you I say I refuse, I refuse. It has to be, is, even though I can talk grammar and Sanskrit around anyone in the movement, I still would refuse it. You know why? Because I'm just one person, and Prabhupada said, together, you know, together, we're yeah. powerful. So I want to bring talent in. It doesn't mean they don't need Harvard or Oxford or Yale degrees. Talent, plus people who have. Harvard, Yale, whatever degrees, and we've all come together as loving disciples who want to please their master. This, this is perfect. This is perfect. This is heaven. Yeah, I have a question uh, regarding, like for for me, for example, personally, I am not a Prabhupada disciple. I'm a grand disciple. And and who you're discussing about are your god brothers, right? So per etiquette, I cannot take certain sides, or else it'd be offensive. And I can't say certain things because uh, I don't want to. I don't want to say be I don't want to not offensive, but I don't want to be critical. I'm saying you can because you're god brother. Uh, but how do is because most of us, you know, second generation grand disciples, the disciples of Prabhupada are very, are there, you know, much every year, you know, it's becoming less and less. So my question is, how do we as grand disciples of Prabhupada navigate this very, very sensitive issue without being offensive? Okay, well, you see, this this word offensive is is interesting. It, it I think devotees it, it really puts a lot of fear in devotees unnecessarily there is a way to question when, when something does not feel right or seem right one has to be first of all self-honest about that instead of becoming part of the culture of repression which krishna clearly you know it admonishes Arjuna. He says, "What well, in a rhetorical question, what can repression accomplish?" Right, right in the Gita. So, yeah. it we have to be honest and transparent about what we experience. You know, if, if 
if something seems more reasonable, then it's not a question of taking sides. It's about being truthful. Um, it's about promoting honesty. And remember, truthfulness is the only leg standing right now of the Dharma, right? And that's shaky as heck, I'll tell you that. <laughs> okay? In the age of conspiracies and all, all manner of fantasy and paranoia and fear. Here's the point. All of that is generated from fear. As Tathasta Shakti, we're kind of like Humpty Dumpties, you know? We're kind of on the wall and we're scared of the fall. Yeah. You know? So, um, the, but the fact is this, that the, the way we don't have to teeter is to just, uh, uh, you know, for example, Nam Rasaji, you, you, you can disagree with me. I won't take offense, as we often say. I won't be offended or I won't be insulted, you know. Right. Um, by the way, the word offense, we, you know, it comes from what we translate as uh, from the aparada. And aparada, few devotees understand, means moving away from loving worship. If you, you know, if you say, uh, Garuda, I, you know, I just don't see things the way you see them. Well, that's yeah. honesty. That's that's honesty. But if you call me, you know, a dirty frog, <laughs> I'm going to be upset. Okay. I'm going to be upset, honestly. Okay. Right. You know, because I'm a bird. I'm Prabhupada named me after a bird and I want that to be honored. Okay. So don't call me, don't call me some kind of amphibian. It's insulting. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. So, so that becomes hurtful. Right. But, but, yeah. but because, but I need to know if you don't agree with me, Nam Rasaji, because if you're not honest with me, then where's the dialogue? There's no dialogue if there's no honesty. Mm. Don't worry about hurting my feelings. You're not going to hurt my feelings. Yeah, there was a there was a, a Facebook. Uh, uh, I, oh, I got the name right. right. That's great. Anyway, on Disgrace Book, I found a, um, uh, a a a thread where devotees were just slamming me for producing a Bhagavad Gita. I mean, they were just. I mean awful things they were saying about me, which were all true, but I mean, they're awful things, okay? Now, I couldn't actually get on the thread because I wasn't friends with the, but, you know, the way it works on Facebook. You have to be a friend of the author, the author of the thread, whatever, anyway. So there are about six devotees going wild. I mean, it's a, it's a vulture, you know, I, I was the carcass. Yeah. And, and the vultures were like picking at me, you know, right? So I was like, in a perverse kind of way, enjoying finding this, okay? So I wrote to each one of them, and I said, if you actually feel I've done wrong here by my spiritual master, these are all second generation devotees. If you feel that I have wronged my spiritual master, then I want to learn from you. If you can show me that I have really wronged him in my publication of the Bhagavad Gita, then I'll take it off the market. And I will be your student. None of them wrote back to me. Mm. Where's the dialogue? As soon as there's no dialogue, Namra Sanji, we're finished. Then then it's a disease. So it means transparency. Look, I didn't have a problem with their tearing me apart and saying I was an offender to the guru and all that. Fine, show me how I'm an offender. Teach me how to be a better disciple to, for Prabhu, to Prabhupada. And I will be all the better for it. But for whatever reason, they were either afraid or they weren't willing or whatever. A hard question is mm -hmm. that, for lack of a better phrase, the devotees that matter, like the B, like representatives of the BBT and GBC, 
There is no dialogue. There isn't? Well, there, there isn't, I'm saying, because they weren't, they didn't come to your convention or, or your, you know. So there's, okay. no, there's no dialogue there. So how do we expect anything's going to change if we don't have the people that matter are there? Not that those other devotees didn't matter, but I mean, I'm just seeing it how it is. Like, they're the ones who can make change. Like, if, if, if a GBC member or a BBT member was like, oh, we, maybe we should reassess this whole thing. But they weren't there. Okay. Um, let, let me um, give the BBT a, a benefit of the doubt here. They did come to Washington, D.C. to meet with me. They did come and hear my concerns. Uh, it was a very good meeting. And they, one of them asked me if I could just cancel the meeting in Berkeley uh, a few months later. Why? And I said, no. I said, there's no way, but you're invited. And uh, one of them said, well, I want to speak at it. I want a chance to actually give a talk at it. And I said, well, that's not really possible. I said, you've talked here. You've spoken here. I can present any of the, I'm going to present all of the BBT. These scholars have all read the bbtedit.com website. Everything's there. Yeah. I mean, what, 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 do you, what are you going to enlighten them about that they don't already know? In fact, you're not even the editor. So, but you're invited to come. I would love for you to come and you will listen as you see fit. Right. No, nope, they refused to come. Now, even so, they did institute what they call an RRP, a revisions review panel, which is purely advisorial for the BBT editorial board who does who do have power. And these this panel was created because of that meeting in DC. But you see, it's misconceived. They're reviewing the revisions. Wait a second. Wait a second. Don't review the revisions. You've got to start with Prabhupada's instructions. So I mentioned that there, and they said, okay, well, they will come up with guidelines for, in, for editing Prabhupada's books. So I've asked for the guidelines for the last year, and no one sends me any guidelines. Hmm. I've had a little bit of a rocky relationship with the BBT, although individually I'm fond of each one of them. But I really... Look, I mean, my hat goes off to the BBT. My God, the, the amount of production, yeah, and the, the 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 quality of the publications, and the and the 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 uh, it's it's extraordinary. I mean, I I'm in awe of what they do. Editing, no, I'm not in awe of what they do. And that is my area of expertise. I will assert that, and I've analyzed it, and they have not done it right. So what would you say, I mean, we're at one, one hour, 53 minutes. We should be wrapping it up pretty soon, but sure. what would you say, like, what would you advise like practitioners? Like for me, for example, what would you advise someone like me? Like, are you going to tell me like only read max 72 or read everything or, or what? Because I'm, I, because you're telling me all this stuff and I'm like, Oh you know, that's there's a, there's a lot of edits that shouldn't be there. And, you know, so. Well, you know, it's interesting because not only are there alternative publishers to, for the original Max 74 with the little corrections, right? Max 74. Right. Um, and I use that. That's what I use in my uh, classroom. Although, honestly, I was using Jai Dwaita's even when I was objecting to the 83 because I believe in supporting the BBT. Right. But then That's someone in the BBT told, said, Garuda's a hypocrite. He's using Jai Dwight's 83, and he's <laughs> criticizing it. So, you know, I said, okay. You know, I wrote to them, and I said, well, look at that. Here I am. I already explained. I'm trying to support the BBT. But because you said that, now I'm going to go use the original at Max 72. Just because you, you're calling me a hypocrite, fine. <laughs> you know, look, look. So 
I used the uh, Krishna Books uh, Incorporated one. It's beautiful. It's beautiful, beautifully set. Where is it? Anyway, I've got it somewhere. Uh, anyway, yeah. it's beautifully done, and it's it uses the original art. It has the original cover. Everything is exactly the way it's supposed to be, at least for the Mac 72. Now, to really make it the definitive original edition would be to do this kind of treatment of Arsha Prayoga in healthy tension with Yukta Vairagya. Right. And that's the magical formula because everything stays the same. Except little tiny, you know, comma here or that. It's just um, inconsequential, you know, right. I, things like that. But but you don't eliminate anything. You illuminate everything. No elimination, just illumination. Right. It's the gift that Prabhupada gave us. Yes, definitely. He loved I, I, that book. He loved that book. There's a picture with him, with Anandu Kumar, where he, he has the book in his hands. He's putting it to his head. Wow. Is that a book that he doesn't authorize? Uh, I don't think so. He authorized it. I commend your kind of being involved in all this when you don't really need to or <laughs> no, no, I don't I have five books yeah that I'm trying to publish with all already have contracts right I'm not I'm not a person who sits around being bored in fact how dare you take up my time now I mean, <laughs> I, mean I, I mean the the audacity you have to invite me on this podcast I mean you've got some nerve pal I, I... <laughs> Uh, well, well, Garuda Prabhu, it was really, really nice. I want to give you a chance to give some parting words to our listeners about this whole thing. Oh, before that, I want to say that um, I think there's a way to go about this, like you said, in search of truth and not be offended. That word offensive, but I mean, be like call people dirty frog and things like that. There's no need to do that. Like no, we, not. we all, we all are trying our best in 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 the service of Prabhupada and the service of ISKCON, and we're trying to move forward. And and the way to move forward is through dialogue, like we're having now. And I hope that those who listen to this can can um, those who can spur on some change can maybe have a maybe rethink things or re you know reassess things. But but I want to give you a chance to say some parting words for our listeners. Yeah, I mean. Devotees should read whatever they are comfortable reading. It is up to the leadership of the movement, the GBC, to determine the spiritual content and how to preserve and honor Prabhupada's books. The BBT is not filled with directors who are competent in the spiritual evaluation of Prabhupada's books. That's not what they're there to do. They're there to produce the books. And ISKCON is there to distribute the books and to learn from the books and to disseminate the knowledge in the books. Dialogue is the most important thing. If I'm in error, I want to be corrected. That's not an offense. That's a duty. Honestly, I and, you know, Jai Dwaita Swami called me a lifelong friend in the front of his book. And I still consider myself some kind of friend in some way, I invited him no less than five times to have a dialogue in front of the devotees about the editing, to work together on this. I just think he was tired, honestly. You know, whatever the reason. I don't really know the reason, but he refused me every time. Di without dialogue, there is no relationship. We must come together and talk about these things. I am completely open to critique and correction in the error of my ways. And that's the mood we need to have. Like, hey, I, please criticize me. I want to grow. Right. And let's grow together in pleasing Prabhupada. So, but not everyone has that attitude. And, you know, it's all right to make a mistake. We all make mistakes. We are those, you know, the four, you know, uh, uh, sort of errors of conditioned souls, right? But together we can avoid those mistakes. 
But the worst mistake is not to admit that there's a mistake when it's being pointed out. That is, now that's egregious. That's really a problem. And this is what has been so painful for devotees is to see the revisions go on and on and on. Six different versions of the second edition, you know, being corrected. Oh, this is, this is, this tears away at the heart of devotees. And I'll just end with this. And my God brother, Shravanandaji, who called me every other morning, who raised the funds for the academic conference in Berkeley, a lot of the funds. He was dying in a hospital. He called me desperately the morning he was to go into some kind of emergency care, whatever. He, his last dying words to me were, please help Prabhupada's Vani. And then blood started coming out of his mouth. He said, Garuda, I'm, I'm, blood's coming out of my mouth. I have to go. I, I told him that I loved him. And I said, I will do anything to serve that request. And, is, and those are the last words that he spoke. Wow. The last words. And there was a devotee in his room as he was passing away gradually. Uh, a devotee, God brother of mine, said that Garuda's working hard on putting the conference together and it will happen. And he was lying there with his eyes closed, but, but his arm went up like this. And, and that was the last motion he made. Now, anyway, this matters so deeply to devotees. Prabhupada's Vani is so precious and so important. And we need to come together to know how to honor it and treat it and preserve it. That's all. Thank you. Well, Guru De Prabhu, thank you so much. It was really fascinating discussion, and I and I appreciate you, um, you know, doing what you're doing, and also um, speaking in a way that may not be, you know, pleasing to everyone, but it's the truth that needs to be Did said. Did I call you a dirty frog? I didn't, <laughs> no, you didn't call me a dirty frog. I didn't call anyone else a dirty frog. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Well, anyways, thank you, Guru Prabhu. I, I hope we can have uh, you know many more podcasts. I know you have so much to say and so many good um, perspectives on different issues that we face in our beautiful mu movement of ISKCON. Uh, yeah. But thank you very much. Please stay on. I'm going to turn off the recording. I, uh, we can talk after. But Hare Krishna, everyone. Thank you for listening to the Late Morning Program. Hare Bowl. Thank you for the opportunity, Namrasaji. Hare Bowl. Thank you. Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare.